thanks to Annabeth Chase, who asks for help on how to choose what to study at university. She is graduating high school next year, and she is interested in computer science and mathematics, but also human biology and medicine. She asks some very pertinent questions. Well done. It's very good of you to think seriously about your options well ahead of the deadline, because this is an important decision that will have a great influence on your future. Your choice of university subjects will open some doors, but will also close some others. And that's why it's scary. It's a scary choice. Everybody is scared of losing options. But you have to make a choice. If you let things just happen by inertia, then it is a choice as well, and you will waste those crucial years, and even more doors will close. Welcome to Frank's Day Unexplains. I'm a professor at the University of Cambridge. I hope my perspective will help you make a better choice. I have five recommendations for you, from most to least obvious. One, figure out what you love to do. What are your favorite subjects at school? Everyone takes this as a starting point for choosing a university subject, of course, and you should too. You will never be successful at anything unless you enjoy doing it. Pick something you truly love. Is this the kind of stuff you would do in your spare time, even if you're not paid to do it? That's a good test. Two, what are you good at? What, are, what subjects do you get the highest marks in at school? And of course, there's a correlation usually with the previous point. You may love biology and get your highest marks in biology. Great, but you must stick both boxes, what you like and what you're good at, and I'm sure you have already. Moving on to the slightly less obvious. Three, what are your career prospects? Will the thing you love and are great at also give you the employment prospects and the lifestyle you'll be happy with? Don't stop at the first two points and optimize just for having a good time at university during those three years, as too many young people do. Consider what you're going to do over the next 40 years after you get that degree and see if that is also something you aspire to. Okay? When I was your age, my favorite high school subjects were philosophy and mathematics, and they were also my highest marks. I also liked a bunch of other things that I was not being taught in high school, including computing, building things, music, photography, and so on. So I was not sure what to do. And I asked my philosophy teacher, Professor Lanza, who was one of the great mentors in my life. And credit to his wisdom, even though I was his best pupil, he told me not to do philosophy. Since I was also good at maths and sciences, I should do a STEM subject. And I could always read philosophy books in my spare time. But if I did philosophy at university, he told me, I would never be able to learn those difficult maths by myself. Plus, I would also struggle financially, whereas STEM would give me many interesting career opportunities. Now, in your case, the choice between biology, medicine and computing is not as radical as it was for me, because these are all scientific subjects. But do think about the possible careers opened and closed by each of these choices. You sound like you want to stay at the intersection, doing a medical computer science degree, or perhaps a bachelor's degree in one and a master in the other. I don't know you personally, so I can't tell, but try to understand, maybe with the help of people you trust, whether you truly have an interdisciplinary interest or if it's just fun sitting, you can't figure out one or the other. In the first case, to work really at the intersection of those fields, like my professor, I advise you to go for the most technically difficult one first, because that's the one that's going to be the hardest one to study on your own as a graduate student when you have a degree in the other. Now, in the second case, if you're just undecided between the two, make up your mind and pick one. It's going to be painful now, but it's going to be beneficial later. Four, listen to people who have relevant experience. Many people your age prefer to get advice from people who are just a couple of years older than them, maybe current university students. Fine. On this channel, you'll find videos with my wonderful students with whom you can identify more easily than with me. But don't stop there. Talk to older people too, especially ones who know you and who care about you, starting with your parents, your grandparents, and maybe your favorite teacher like I did. If they have been to university themselves, then they can tell you about their struggle to choose the right subject when they were your age and what that choice meant for their life 20, 30 or 60 years later. If they didn't go to university, then they'll tell you whether they regretted not going there or whether they were glad to have made better use of those crucial years. Because going to university is all very well, but it's not a mandatory choice and it's not necessarily the choice leading to greatest success or the greatest happiness for everyone. So by all means, speak with people close to your age if you like, but before making this important decision, please also speak with people who have already lived a bigger chunk of their life and can give you the long-term perspective that the young ones will never have. Don't expect to get good advice about married life from someone who's only 15. And finally, point five, don't overthink it to the point of analysis paralysis. It is a very important decision that will undoubtedly affect the rest of your life, but it's not the end of the world if your choice turns out to be suboptimal. There exist people who study law and end up working in technology, or people who study engineering and end up doing finance, sometimes even very well. 
it's futile to try to plan one's entire life as a teenager and expect the plan will never change. Maybe the person who's now in finance would have done better if she had studied economics rather than engineering, because she would have stronger foundations in that field. But maybe not, because she might miss some insights that the engineering perspective now gives her. Life never goes exactly to plan. Choose wisely because it's an important choice, but don't worry too much. It's not a life sentence. Okay? If you're willing to catch opportunities, even create opportunities, you will always have another chance. If you found this helpful, leave a like and say neurosurgeon in a comment to let me know you made it this far. And I think you will also like this other video I'm making, Seven Secrets for Prospective Students on what a university education is really about. Best wishes.